Our journey in the land of rivers continued as we arrived at Marak U, the major capital of the Rakhine state. We cruised along the river for more than 80 kilometers, which took us about six hours. The cruise gave us a unique insight into the lives of the people along both sides of the river, which is always fascinating for visitors like us. The locals here are Rakhine people, who were once thought of as uncivilized savages. Actually, it seemed a bit out of character when we were greeted with gracious smiles, highlighted by their white teeth in contrast with their dark skin, and extremely welcoming demeanor. Since there is a saying that water is the origin of civilization and a way of life, we would like to take you upstream to experience the three great capitals of Rakhine of the past. We'll start our journey at Tanyawadi, which was the primary kingdom of the Rakhine state, and then move south to Waitali and end up at Marak U, which provided all of the current prosperity of Arakan state. Nowadays, the wild vines that once wrapped around the pagodas and the Lord Buddha images covered by precious trees have faded out due to the steady stream of travelers who come to this place. But the aura of prosperity still remains. Millions of the pagodas are still standing, telling us stories of the past. Now it's time to learn the history behind the impressive mountains of Arakan. the kingdom of Rakhine was regarded as a territory that brought the tribes of Mongol and Araya together in the second century. The Macedonian general Ptolemy called this empire Ikire, which means the land of silver. The title corresponds to an old legend named Rakhine. Rakapura was a city in the legend that means the city of giants. This term would match the words in Sanskrit that Rakasa or Raksod, interpreted as a giant. Arakan comes from Arakan Yoma Mountain, which is the back fortress for the people of Rakhine. Around 24,000 years ago in the Buddhist era, the Rakhine people, or Arakanese, established their first kingdom called Tanyawadi, which means the land with abundant crops. Tanyawadi reached its peak during the 1st to the 8th Buddhist centuries. Tanyawadi was the capital of the first historically accurate Arakanese kingdom. We are about to arrive in Tanyawadi. Although the remains of the past are fading away, the most glorious symbol of Buddhism is still supported by faith through the passage of time. This Buddhist monument is Mahamoni Paya Temple, which houses the famous Buddhist sculpture. The Mahamoni is a, like, it's a very great temple, very great statue in the world of the state. Also in the time of the king and also princess, the Buddha, they really did, they really made of they like, the look like the Buddha, this is Mahamuni's Buddhist images, the Muhammad. And when they think, when they feel also the Buddhist images, they have no, and also the, the bodies are not very close. Because of the, this is impossible for the workman, and also the king, and also the princess, the Buddha, to get his power. And also the, the after this is close to the body.
Mahamuni Temple was built on the hill that was once used as the house of the old Mahamaimuni Buddha image, which is now in Mandalay. The temple is located on a hill, which is 10 meters high and is surrounded by walls. Each side of the wall has a ramp, which reaches to the upper level. The eastern ramp leads to the place where the Mahamaimuni image is situated. To the west of the temple, you can visit the museum, which is full of antique collections and carved stones, which tell us stories of the ancient times when the empire first came into existence. Arakan locals are experts who specialize in making Buddha images. In the past, the people of Southeast Asia recognized this country as the land of flourishing Buddhism in the Buddhist era. The Buddha images from this area are cast with pure faith, and that faith is represented by the highest number of Buddha images anywhere, because you can find more than 90,000 Buddha images in only one temple. The most famous is Mahamaimuni. The Mahamai Muni image was cast in the Tanyawadi era. It was the first empire of Arakan or Rakhine. According to the historical records, Rakhine was first established in the year 689 of the Buddhist era, about 2,000 years ago, during King Chansurya's reign. The Arakanese people have the highest respect for this sacred Buddha image because it is believed to have been cast in the presence of the Lord Buddha while visiting Tanyawadi. He sat for the craftsmen while meditating under the Bodhi tree. It is also believed that the leader of the craftsmen named Saka was the Indra. When completed, the Lord Buddha cast his breath on the image seven times. By doing this, the image was given life as the life of the Lord Buddha inside. It represents the Lord Buddha himself who came to enlighten people in the area about Buddhism. This is the reason behind the ritual washing of the face of the Mahamai Muni Buddha image every morning. It has been practiced for a long time because of the belief that this image can breathe, so the face needs cleaning every day. Don't be surprised to see fewer people paying their respect to the big Buddha image in the temple than the small Buddha image, since the latter one is the original one in the Rakhine state. It has never been moved anywhere, unlike the big Buddha image, which is a mock built by a wealthy man named Le Jodun, the same man who built the Iron Temple in Sitwe province. The real Buddha image is currently housed in Mandalay. Why Mandalay? Because everything did not go just as the Rakhine people had planned. When the troops of King Bradung invaded Arakan Yoma and made those people move Mahamaimuni Buddha image to the Irrawaddy River, the troops put the Buddha image on a raft to Amarapura city before sending it to Mandalay. From the kingdom of Tanyawadi to the south, we reached another former capital of Myanmar. 
The outside of Wei Tali is almost no different from any other small village. Taking a closer look, we can see that the remnants of the glory days are still here. Today we can see some old walls and the gates of Wei Tali, which were built in the 4th century. No matter where you dig, tiles, debris, other ancient artifacts can be found here. The sculptures and statues are still around for us to see. Once they were used to adorn the walls of the city and the terrace of the palace. These antiques are now exhibited to the general public and experts who would like to study them. This is the Wesali net. It really is like any kind of a net, and also there. Also, this is like a wisdom of Vesno, and also in Siwa, and also the Krishna. Because of this kind of a net, they are from the region of the Indian. Also, the Chinese are like a division of with the Indian. This is a like, and I look at the sea, and it feels like one of the net. Also, this is a uh, Siwa. This is the Siwa. Also, in here is a like on the Siwa net. Here's a like so many golf meet in here. Because around the old Wisali, the villages, they believe in that. Because sometimes also they have the no good business. Sometimes they have the family also, uh, the, like a uh, disease. Also in the time, also when they came to here, also they put in the gold plate in the, around here. Taking a break from history, let's enjoy some conversation with the locals here. Although time passes by quickly, Buddhism is still a major influence on the Arakanese people. We are now in front of a Buddha image carved from a single black stone that stands five meters high. Though the image has been repainted black, the sacred legend of this Buddha still remains today. We are very lucky to be here today since it is the Lent season of the people here. People from all over the world gather here for this Buddhist practice. The path is not easy to travel, but the faith of these people is boldly illustrated as they walk to the temple under a strong and persistent sun. Now let's hear from some of them. They have already the finish off the, 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 the meditation today because the two days are last day. And then after they, they prepare up to their baggage and also the closing, and then they are going back to their home and to their village. This is uh, for the musician of the Buddhist people. This is good if you try the meditation. Because of uh, when they are national pathway, at what time, also which day, they will be national pathway, they don't know exactly. Because before, to the Amnesha Passman, they try the meditation, and then to their mind, mind, to their mind is very clear, to their mind. Because of the, this is very the heavy for the today, because today is the last day. Uh, the whole, so one week, you know, so they try the, all, they try the meditation, so one is a, everything is a wrong way. From the former capital of Wei Tali, we arrived at the focal point of our journey, the ancient city of Marak U, which is the pride of the Rakhine people, even today. Mar 
Rakhu was located on the left bank of the Ongdat Shuang River, which is also known as Miaowu, which is the Arakanese pronunciation. Morocco was established as the capital of the Arakanese Kingdom in 1430, and it was colonized by Burma in 1784. The area of the inner city of 8 kilometers features more than 145 historical sites. According to Arakanese history, after the collapse of Lemro in the 17th century of the Buddha era, King Min Sa Mun believed that Lemro was in no condition to remain the capital. So the king decided to take control of the situation and moved the capital city to a new location and called it Marak U, which means the first place to the north. The love time also 80, about the 50, 15 to 17th century in the whole of Mao city. Also, we have a lot of so water gate and also the city gate. So normally, they are also from part of the east side. Also, we have the the water gate. It's a poor water gate, and it's a city wall. It's a, the the seven city wall. This is only part of the east, and this uh, part of the west. They are also part of the west. Is it like a city wall? It's a city gate. It's a seven city gate. It's a two water gate. This is part of the west, and this the the northern off of the side. It's like uh, the, the port water gate, and then the, the city gate is like only eight city gate. It's in the part of the northern side. And the part of the south side, it's like uh, the two water gate, two water gate, and also the five city gate. It's a part of the south side. This is, uh, th there are also in the long time, so 15 to 17th century during the Mrao period. If you have a chance to visit here, there is a very important temple that cannot be missed, Shitong Paya Temple. It is not only the charm of the temple that fascinates visitors, but its location, which is remarkably close to the city center. These are the reasons why this place has become one of the favorite tourist attractions here. This temple has not been abandoned like some other temples that fade away as time passes by. According to historical records, this temple was built by King Minba Gri in 1536. It was built to commemorate the victorious Morocco troops at the Bay of Bengal. The troops consisted of soldiers from Chittagong, Dhaka, Barisal, and Komila, which are all currently major cities in Bangladesh. Apart from the background of the temple, which shows the greatness of the kingdom, the name of the temple itself is also important. Shitong means 80,000 because there are 80,000 Buddha images here at the temple. It is also said that there is a relic of the Lord Buddha and his disciples inside every one of the Buddha images at the temple. Besides these small Buddha images, you can also find lots of carvings inside the cave. We found this really surprising because this artwork is so closely connected to the history and beliefs of people, such as the Wei San Tara allegory and the advance of Hinduism from the north of India. This is very different from other parts of Asia which were influenced by the south of India where Siva was respected. You can see the influence in the Khmer Kingdom where their life and rituals clearly define the glory of Morak U. So this is the according to call this is the Brahma. The Brahma is like a supervised being of the universe. And then also this is the like the Ganesian, this is Indian thing. Uh, in this the temple also we find is at every corner, also we find a lago with the Ganesian. This is the Indian own culture. In the time, also the general of the king, and he took when he fight in the war of the twelve Bangladesh city. Also when he went to the war, 
also he talked from the uh, Indian culture, Indian music. Uh, he went to compound off the beat with the tempo. Pienza Rupa is the sacred creature of the people of Myanmar, and the Rakhine people have Bian, which is a creature from a mixture of nine animals. Bian has the trunk of an elephant, a horn of a rhino, the ears of a rabbit, the head of a tiger, the wings of a garuda, the body of a serpent, the legs of a lion, the eyes of a deer, and the tail of a fish. It is indeed a very difficult story to tell, so it should be told by one of the locals here. And here, this is like the elephant the ivory. And so look at the see the eyes. Also, this is like the deer eyes because the deer is like all over the wall. So the deer is like this. Very clear and also very bright, in, so very nice. This is the the lion. And this is the lion for from the lion. This is the head. This is the tiger. And this is the horse, the ear. You know, it's the ear. The ear is like a horse ear because the horse and he can he can as the listening about it two mile or three mile. When you arrive to the road. And also please to buy it like it. Yeah, this is the lucky animal for the people. เสน่ห์ของมะกูลกิ่งน่ะมีอยู่ผมว่ามีสองสองสามสามจุดใหญ่ๆนะจุดแรกคือการเดินทางไปนะนั่งเรือห้าหกชั่วโมงนะถ้